Hey guys, in this video we are going to be sizing a plug flow reactor based on the design equation that we've just derived given a particular conversion. And another way of saying this is based on how much of my reactants I want to convert into products, how big of a PFR will I need, what kind of flow rate would I expect to have, or what kind of reaction rate constant do we absolutely need inside of our reactor in order to make this thing happen. And so the way I'm going to be doing this is by working through an example problem in which we have a first order reaction in which we have some species A being converted into species B. Um, and this is, has a reaction rate constant of K. It's very important that I explicitly tell you this is a first order reaction. We haven't necessarily gotten to kinetics yet, but we'll talk about it later. Um, and another important piece of information here is that we're dealing with constant volumetric flow rates that I denote with a little v character with that. So um, without getting too in-depth with uh, a tangent, um, when you work with plug flow reactors, it's not uncommon that you might have gas uh, phase reactants or species present. And if that is the case and you are generating or uh, increasing or decreasing the number of moles of gas you have present in your reactor, your volumetric flow rates can change. Um, and this depends on the reaction or the phase of the species. So this cannot always be assumed. So um, just make a note of that, that we are being told this information to make our life easier uh, for this introductory problem in order to first apply the design equation that we've just learned. So with that out of the way, I've kind of drawn our system here. Uh, in red, and what we see is we've got a flow rate Fa naught moles of A into our PFR per time. It has a concentration of Ca naught and a volumetric flow rate of V naught. Um, and because it's constant, we know that V naught is equal to V. Um, and then Xing our reactor, we've got Fa moles leaving uh, with concentration of Ca and another volumetric flow rate of V. And turning to the design equation that we've derived last time, what we first do is make note that Fa is equivalent to the volumetric flow rate inside of a reactor times the concentration of A. And um, what we're going to do with this information, and if we do a dimensional analysis, because that's very important, um, what we'll find is this would be like cubic meters per second of liquid exiting, and then Ca would have units of moles of A per cubic meter of your reactor. So this as we can see, hopefully, uh, has units of moles per second, which is what we expect a flow rate to be. Um, anyway, so plugging in this number right here, or these values here, what we find is that we've got dFA is really equal to d times the volumetric flow rate times the concentration of A dV, d big V, and this is equal to RA and RA, because it is a first order reaction, um, what that means is this is equivalent to minus, and I have a minus sign because we are consuming A in this reactor, uh, minus K times CA. K is a reaction rate constant. Um, and then CA is concentration of A. Okay, and so um, because we also said that we have a constant volumetric flow rate in our reactor, that means that we can pretty easily just pull out uh, the volumetric flow rate term here. And if I rewrite this, we will now have V times dCA dV is equal to minus K times CA. And uh, you know, if you haven't taken calculus in a while, this technique that we're about to do is called separation of variables. And what that basically means is that we will isolate all the terms that are functions of CA on one side and all the terms that are functions of volume on the other side. And what this leads us to is we'll have one over CA times DCA is equal to minus K divided by the volumetric flow rate times dv. And um, so now I just multiplied both sides by dv and divided by little v, and this is what we arrive at. What we will now do is uh, integrate this thing and 
And you can note that our reaction rate constant and our volumetric flow rates were said to be constant, so we can remove these from our integral. And the bounds of the integral are very important here. So basically, we want to find how much volume we need. So in this case, we're going to be integrating from volume equals zero to the amount of volume we need, which would be big V. I'm sorry, my handwriting is not great today. Uh, oh man, sorry. Integrating from zero to big V, we are pulling this term out. Um, what we also do on the other side of our equation though, is we will make an assumption that at V equals zero, CA is equal to CA naught, so some inlet concentration of A, so therefore the lower limits of integration on the left side of this equation will be CA naught, and the upper limit of integration will be CA, which is the outlet concentration of CA that we are demanding inside of our plug flow reactor. And then continuing with this equation, recognizing that one over CA um, results when we take the integral in uh, the natural log of CA. What we find is that we now have the natural log of CA evaluated from CA naught to CA is equal to, and I'm just moving the constant terms out, and then integral from zero to V of dV is just V, big V. Uh, what we now have here, looking at this equation, um, is the following. So, and I am going to be a little more explicit in the math because sometimes I don't like how people can gloss over this stuff because um, I know sometimes I forgot a lot of these math identities. Um, we have the natural log of CA minus the natural log of CA naught, and then this term right here is really equal to the natural log of CA divided by CA naught, which is equal to minus K over V times big V. And then another identity in math that sometimes I forget is if we multiply this whole thing by negative one, so right and left side by negative one, we basically flip this natural logarithm. So what we would find is we have natural log of CA naught over CA, which is equal to minus natural log of CA over CA naught is equal to K over V times the volume in our plug flow reactor. Okay, and we're getting close to the end here in terms of answering our question, which is find the uh, volume of our reactor that we are going to need for a particular conversion of X. Uh, the discussion we'll have about conversion could be a whole lecture, but I don't want to make it one. Conversion of X, right, so we're not going to talk about it right now, but um, for the sake of finishing this example, what we're going to say is that um, conversion is equal to X, and one way we can look at it, because we have constant volumetric flow rates, is that CA, the outlet concentration, is equal to 1 minus X, our conversion, at times CA naught. So this, again, is conversion. And so if we take this definition and plug it into this equation right there, what we'll find is that we, what we now have is natural log of CA naught divided by, and then plugging in this definition, um, 1 minus X times CA naught. Is, oh, sorry. My computer can get weird sometimes. Uh, is equal to K over V times V. And so this equation right here is the star of the show in this video because what I want you to see is that um, basically this stuff just cancels out and we get one over one minus X. What we learned when we took chemistry or organic chemistry is that getting 100% yield is very difficult slash impossible, right? So at X equals one, which is 100% conversion, what we're seeing inside of our plug flow reactor in this case is that it is impossible because we will get one over zero, which is infinity, and we're trying to take, so we would basically need an infinitely large plug flow reactor um, 
in order to uh, make this reaction go to completion. Um, other things to make note of here would be how important the reaction rate constant is in this relationship. If we've got a really fast reaction, we don't need as big of a volume anymore. So looking at this thing, not just from the eyes of a mathematician, but a bit more intuitively as a chemical engineer, not to say anything bad about mathematicians, but we can start seeing a lot more intuitive sense here. So, um, you know, if we have a faster reaction, which would be indicated by having a higher K value or reaction rate constant value, uh, we would need a smaller uh, volume in order to achieve the same conversion. Um, so this relationship that we just arrived at in this specific example, this does not apply to every single plug flow reactor. Um, one over one minus X is equivalent to K over V times the reactor volume. This is a very important thing to understand what these numbers truly mean. And so I hope this helps and let me know if you have any questions and thank you for watching.